All right guys, so on today's field tips, we're gonna be going through the process of building a bamboo backed Osage bow, just like the one you see here. Now bamboo back bows are something that I don't have a lot of experience with. And so I started this process at the Oklahoma Self Bow Jamboree and got a tremendous amount of help from the guys down there. All right. All right, so basically what you've done is you've picked out a piece of bamboo for the length of this bow so that you're, you have the nodes distributed on each limb equally. So down right. here at the tip, you got about four inches. Down right. at that tip, you got about four inches. Yep. Yep. And then your nodes are breaking on the limbs evenly. So that way when you tiller it, you know, the node's gonna be a little thicker and a little stronger right there. So you want them in the same places so it, it makes it easier to tiller the bow. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now the first thing I did was go to get a kit from Ralph Renfro. Now Ralph started the process, we traced out the pattern, cut everything to shape on the bandsaw, and then got everything flat on the belt sander and ready to glue up. So the first thing we did, you, you cut cut out the profile. Right. Then you thin uh, thin the band saw, uh, thin the uh, bamboo on the bandsaw. Right. And then we put the bamboo on the belt sander to get it perfectly flat. Right. So that right. it lays right against your belly that's laminate. Right. And that's so you'll have a good glue line when you when you glue it up. Yep. Uh, you won't have any gaps in it. And if, if there is a if there is a slightest gap somewhere. You, you can you can shoot some CA into it and it'll more than likely it'll be all right but okay yeah and then uh, the next thing we did was taper out your Osage belly laminate yeah. and get that bending good just like right. you'd floor tiller us exactly off. yeah yeah we want to it, it needs to be tapered and actually what you're doing when you taper it uh, you're, you're tapering the side that you're gluing so that you have a flat surface. So that you have a flat surface on the belly. Yep. You know, uh, if more than likely when you take it off the form, it that gives you that gives you the belly of the bow that you're going ahead and, and put, take some more off to the belly, just like you would a self bow. Yep. 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 All right. That's what we're doing. So we're just going to tape this off to kind of help keep the glue off of the off the backing of the bamboo so you don't have to scrape the rind so much. Keep you from violating that bamboo any. It'll help. So just fitting that tape to the bamboo. Yep, just to... that's all I'm doing. Just, we need to make sure that uh, we're gonna use this uh, saw blade here and just lightly scrape the inside of here to kind of tooth this bamboo just a little bit to give us as much surface area as possible for that glue to adhere to. So we get a much better glue joint and a lot more strength in that glue. And after we do this, we'll wipe everything down with acetone. And all we're doing is trying to kill the oils that are on the wood. Now we're just about ready to get the form set up. Okay, so you can you can adjust how much deflex, how much reflex, yes. just based on where we first how you clamp this, and then how, how far, far in, in you slide we'll these the spacers. Yes. 
Okay. Or, or and how how tall they are. Yep. It just depends on how experienced the guy is tiller and how much snap he wants in his bow. So with these bows, are they gonna um, are they gonna lose much of this over time? Like a, will they follow some? Yeah. Some every bow is gonna follow some. Yeah. But these the glue and the the bamboo and everything these are gonna hold their form longer than a, like a, uh, a regular Osage, yeah. So there's no, to, to get the reflex in here, there's no heating. It's just the tension of the wood against itself, how it's laying and, and the glue. And when it glues together. That's, that's holding that. That's holding it all together, yes. Yep. Okay. We're using Smooth On uh, EA40 glue, which is mixed one to one ratio. That's what Mike's mixing right there. Okay. Or he's making oatmeal. So that's two. just an epoxy? Yes. It's a special epoxy. Uh, it's very, very strong. It's also a little flexible. Mm -hmm. You don't want an epoxy that turns into straight oh, glass sure. because then your bow's not gonna wanna bend. It's gonna crack the epoxy. Yeah. Use a whole lot. It's gonna be a super thin layer we're gonna put on this when we glue this down because the, uh, the more glue you put on it, the more scraping and sanding you're gonna do to get it off. This glue has got a two hour pot time, so there's there's no sense in getting in a big, big rush, putting it on, because uh, it's not gonna do anything until we start heating it up. That's gonna speed up the, dry, the curing process is when we throw it in there to heat it up. So we've got two hour, pretty much two hours to get it applied before it starts stiffening up. That power lamb, when we set that power lamb on there, after we get the glue on the bamboo, we'll put a little extra glue at the edges of that power lamb because you're going to have some type of void there. Even though we've, even though we have sanded this down as paper thin as you can get it here at this edge, it's never thin enough. It's never thin enough. There's always going to be a little bit of gap there when you glue everything together, and uh, you can see that on you can see that on manufactured bows. They just there's going to be some there. So we always make sure we try to dribble a little bit of extra glue in that spot to make sure we have that cavity filled. So you've coated both sides of that lamb with glue? Yep. Yes, because it's gonna be trapped in between the core wood, which on your bow's Osage, and the bamboo. Problem with using those styrofoam cups. Yeah, you get a, a chunk out of the edge of it. Make sure you get him good centered up. Your center marks, we're making sure it's centered in the jig before we start clamping it down. And then we're gonna double check this uh, power lamb. Where's my tape measure at? Yeah, all right. Oh, oh that's, uh, that's yeah. not yours. Seven. Yep, okay. Making sure the power lamb and everything's still centered and something hasn't slid. Which it likes to do. Which, you know, like I said, we've had that issue before. Let's just come straight up like this. Cellophane just keeps all the glue from making a giant mess, and it keeps it off of the uh, off of the uh, mountain bike inner tubes we're fixing to wrap it with. How's our? There we go. Now we'll cook on Crisco, I think. All right, so. See the marks we have down here? That's just to give us reference points to where that power lamb is 
because we're gonna have to put another clamp here to make sure that we uh, that we put pressure here and you don't have a void in the middle of that. See how you got that big gap inside there? If you can see through the, we wanna get that, we wanna make sure we get rid of that. So we have a line here to make sure we get a clamp on that. And there are nothing more than cheap bicycle inner tubes you buy at the department store. Uh, the largest mountain bike inner tube that I can find as far as length. Um, I'm thinking these are 20s maybe, I can't remember. Um, we're gonna start out and we're just gonna stretch that and lay it on there. And once we get it going, we found these, these inner tubes are good because they give us a good uniform tension for the most part all the way around the bow from all sides. And that's just compressing those layers together yes, so sir. that you don't have a gap it's, in it's, there. It's doing the same thing that you would do with clamps. All right, Clay, how much, how much whip you want on this bad boy? How much can I get? <laughs> we can put a lot on there. <laughs> I don't mind tillering. Yeah, it just, uh, it's just the more that's on there, the, the harder it is to, to till her out. And the, uh, so I would we, like for the limb tips to rest a little bit forward of the handle. Okay. Uh, but I we, mean, you guys We can know. adjust that, we can measure it here, we can come down and measure it, we can lift it up. Okay. There's a lot we can do with that. Mike, I would take it on down to the, yeah, here I move mine over some. You go to the, uh, go to the inside like this. Yeah, we want to make sure we're in the same spot. Cool. All right, just crank her down. Okay, so. He would like the limb tips a little further forward of the handle. So we are five and three quarters high here. This limb, limb tip right now, we're a half inch forward of the handle right now. Cause this what is you, a six would, and a quarter. What do you, what's the, how far forward could you go I've safely? Put, I've put, I've put them way up before. I mean, we can really push it. But like I said, the more Six and a quarter you, to the bottom of the limb? To the top. To the top, okay. So what do you so uh, if you let's say you put it an inch and a half in front of the handle, See, what's I that could gonna, bring it up. I could bring it up easily that far. And so you you, you say it's gonna be harder to tiller. What do you mean by harder to tiller? Well, because you've got this big bend into there and you're having to tiller that bend out smooth. So it's gonna take as it as it flexes down, it's gonna have to move this material here and here's gonna move more than this material out here. So it's, it's, it, it, makes, it makes it a lot harder to t when you're tillering it out. And you gotta watch it. Because you'll get it too thin. It's easy to get it too hinge. thin in here and develop a hinge. And it's really easy. We're talking just a, a yeah. scrape or two will develop right. a hinge. Yeah. Um, so you have to keep an eye on not only the shape of the bow, but what portion of the limb is doing the work. Yes. Okay. Well, crank them on up there a little bit. I don't care. We're looking pretty straight so far. Okay, so, all right. He says crank them on up, so we're gonna crank them on up a little bit. Let's see, I'm just gonna push that in some. I think instead of doing that, I'd rather put spacers underneath it. Yeah. So he gets more of a, see, it doesn't end up with this flat out here as much. Right. The, uh, so I'm gonna put spacers under here and I'll get it to a spot and then we'll, come here, Mike. Ready? Let's see. I got this, you'll put a, all right, now set it down. You see that's seven inches right there and I'm, an inch and three quarter from the tip in, Mike.
The reason we're doing all this measuring is when we're making sure that the, ride, the rise that we have that we've put into these limbs is the same from end to end. And then we're trying to make sure that we're the same spot here because if I had this further in and the rise was the same, I'd be working the limb more here and this limb would be flat as we're gluing it up. Mm -hmm. We're trying to make sure that everything on this is as uniform from side to side as possible. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so how far forward are they now? Well, you've got, uh, this is five and three quarters to the top of, top of the center of your riser from this board. And these are seven inches. Okay. So you've got. So when we, when we put this, so when you string this bow, it's those limbs are just gonna kind of straight, be straight. They're gonna, well, no, it'll have some, it'll have some. Okay. When it's strong, when it's set strong like a hybrid. Okay. And um, so the sh final shape of the tiller is going to look a little different on this bow than one with the tips down a little bit. Yep. Yes. So this one is going to look more straight, whereas, uh, and, and tell me if I'm wrong, whereas one that uh, has the limb tips lower is going to be a little bit more bowed out. Is that Correct. right? Correct. Yeah, this, this won't look so much debow. Yeah. Right. If it was straight, it would debow. Yep. This, this, this won't debow. It'll be more reflex deflex when it's strung. So it'll have more tension on the string in, yeah. in the resting position than a debow does. Okay. So. So right now you're good. just kind of trying to get the, the tips to lined keep, up with to the keep them as, as lined up as, as I possibly can. Yes, because you'll have. It's real easy to get a lot of propeller in one of these if you don't keep an eye on that. This point now we're all clamped up. Everything's ready to go. It's got pressure on it. Everything's got glue on it. We got clamps at the fades to try to minimize our voids. Um, we're ready to go in the hot box at this point. So yep. we're just gonna pick it up and take it right over here and set it in the hot box. All right, so this thing was in the box for five hours, cooling down for an hour and a half, two hours. Completely cool. Completely cool. So measure center on both of those so you get everything lined yeah, up. Yeah, make so sure that everything's in the center. Lined up and yeah. Just make sure the handle's in the center. Uh, is that the right side or is that the is that the All right, guys, so uh, we're gonna continue the process of building this bamboo-backed Osage bow that I started at OJAM 
uh, the Oklahoma Self Boat Jamboree earlier this year. Um, down there, we got it uh, all glued up and got it ready to start shaping up the handle and the tillering process, but I didn't have enough time to finish it down there, so I brought it back home and I'm gonna uh, finish it off here. Now, I've already shaped up the handle, did all that on the belt sander and used a 50 grit sanding belt just to, to kind of hog that stuff off uh, as quickly as I could. I've got the handle pretty well uh, rough to shape and now we're gonna start on the tillering process. And so you can see a little bit that that left hand limb, which is the top limb, is a little out of balance. It's not quite as rounded out as the right hand limb. Now with this bow, because this is a reflex deflex design, when you get it to brace, your limbs are gonna be straight because it, they're, they're working to take that reflex out of it. When, they, when, they're, when they're working, um, it's just uncoiling that reflex, and so you're gonna have straight limb tips. Now you can see the left hand limb still has a little bit of reflex in it, so I'm gonna take a little bit off of that just to round it out and make it straighten out like that right hand limb. So from this point on, I mean, you're just treating it like you would any other bow, any other self bow. Still needs to go a little bit more. These bamboo backed uh, bow kits you can get uh, at a couple of different places. You can get a, you can get the kits um, from Three Rivers. You could make it yourself if you had the uh, if you had uh, the capability of sawing uh, Osage into slats. But the kits are pretty reasonably priced. Now because I've already shaped up this handle, I'm taking a little extra piece and putting it under here to kind of simulate where my, my hand, the pressure point of my hand would be on this bow. That's looking better. Maybe just a hair more. But we could we can get a string on that now. It's not too bad. The, uh, the tiller's off a little bit. This limb, the top limb here is still a little stiff. So I'm going to take a little more out of here. Round that out a little bit more, even the tiller up and the weight. It's, we may have to end up shorting it. We'll, uh, we'll see what the weight comes out at. It's probably already Oh, it's maybe about 55 right now. We'll see. Because this thing is so close to final weight already, just simply after gluing it up and doing some very light initial tillering, um, I'm just going to adjust this tiller with sandpaper so that I don't overshoot it. I've got some 80 grit here that should do a do the job pretty well. And make sure you got your glue lines on the side and your edges all cleaned up good. That looks pretty good. So if you look, when I bend it, when I bend it, this limb's just a, 
I mean, just a very slight bit more rounded than this one but it's almost imperceptible. So the tiller on this bow is even, and that's good for this design, which is a little bit different than I normally do. So normally I would make an, an asymmetrical bow, meaning that you have a shorter bottom limb than the top limb. Um, and I'm not gonna get into the whole reason behind that right now, but uh, for this bow, symmetrical design, I'm shooting it three under, and so the pressure point for my finger is aligned with the pressure point uh, for my hand. An even tiller on this bow is, is perfect. Um, this was my first bamboo backed anything. And I was uh, pretty impressed with how easy it was. I mean, this thing was almost tillered uh, at the glue up. And so once I put it on the tillering rack, I had very little work to do. Um, the weight, I'm gonna guess it to be about 45 at 28. Now, this is a 65 inch bow. Now, if I wanted to raise that weight up a little bit, all I'd have to do is cut an inch off of each limb tip, uh, redo my tip overlays, and I could probably bump my weight up by five or six pounds just doing that. So these arrows are obviously not tuned to this bow, but I think if you did get some arrows that were matched to the bow, this thing's gonna shoot just fine. Now, like I said, it did come in a little bit lower weight than I wanted. It's probably about 45 at 28, uh, but if you wanted to raise the weight, just knock a little bit off each end, um, an inch, half an inch, and you could probably bump that weight up by a minimum of five pounds. Um, and I think you, this is a, I think a 65 inch bow. So you've got plenty of room to, uh, to shorten it and bring that weight up. You could probably make a, for a, for a 28 inch, uh, draw, uh, you could get away with a 62 inch bow, uh, with something like this. I think no problem. So if you have any questions about the process on building these bows, you can shoot me an email, leave me a comment, um, and I'll try to help you as much as I can. Now, like I said, I don't have a tremendous amount of experience with these bamboo backed bows, uh, but I just wanted to do a video just to kind of give you a different option uh, for some different, uh, different routes to take if you're looking to get into bow building. Um, with that, we'll see you next time. Uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, check out the Patreon site. Uh, we've got a lot of cool stuff getting uploaded to that, so we'll see you there.